All right, so this video is going to be part two of our intro to Taylor and McLaurin series. So now we're gonna actually be doing an example with this, and that problem right here is find the Taylor series at a equals zero for the function f of x equals e to the x. So a Taylor series at a equals zero is also known as a McLaurin series, okay? That's what a McLaurin series is. It's a Taylor series at a equals zero. So the format for that is the sum from n equals zero to infinity of the nth derivative of f at zero, okay, this is where the a goes, but our a is zero here, is going to be over n factorial and times, well, if it was a Taylor series, it's x minus a to the n, but since our a is zero, right now we're just going to get x to the n. Okay, so this is the formula for a Maclaurin series, okay? Now, we don't know the nth derivative of f at zero. And that's going to be something that we're going to try to find at first. Okay, that's going to be the how we start off this problem. Okay, once we find that, then we have our Maclaurin series. Okay, or our Taylor series at a equals zero. Okay, and then we're going to be able to do stuff like find the radius and interval of convergence. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of what we're about to do. Now, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process of how to do this. And well, the first step is going to be to take derivatives of your function, your f of x, and try to find a pattern. All right, so let's, let's start to do that. Well, this is gonna be a pretty easy example. We know that if we take a derivative here, we're just gonna get e to the x, right? The derivative, you can take the derivative as many times as you want, it's gonna be e to the x. So if we take a second derivative, e to the x. We take a third derivative, e to the x. So that means that the nth derivative of f at x is going to be, well, e to the x, right? So that, great, that's your, that's your step one, okay? This is your first step. Now, you want to do your second step, which is to which is to plug in x equals a, and well, by doing that, you're going to find the nth derivative of f at a. Our a is zero here, so that's finding the nth derivative of f at zero that we wanted previously. So let's start plugging in our our um, a here for x. Now we do that. Well, we get that f of a is the same thing as, well, our a is zero here, so let's say f of zero. It's gonna equal, well, e to the zero power, which is one. And since this is always the same thing, it's always e to the x, f prime of zero is gonna be one, f double prime of zero is going to be one, f triple prime of zero is going to be one. Okay, and, and so on and so forth. The nth derivative of, of f at zero, of course, will also be one. Okay, and there you go. That's your second step. Now you've found your missing piece for that Maclaurin series to be complete. Okay, you have your nth derivative of f at zero. That's one. So now we're moving on to the third step. And the third step is just to set up your series. So if we're going to set up this series here, well, first off, we need to know what we're starting off with. Okay, what we're starting off with is the sum from n equals zero to infinity of the nth derivative of f at zero over n factorial times x to the n, right? We know we're starting off with that. But we know that our nth derivative of f at zero is one. Okay, that's why we did all this, to find this nth derivative of f at zero. Since this is one, well, we're gonna move that x to the n on the top here, just to make this a little more compact. And now we have x to the n over n factorial as our series, okay? Now, lastly, you're gonna to wanna to find your radius and interval of convergence. And well, this may be something that they that they ask for, they may ask for just one of them, the radius or the interval, or they may just say to set up your series, but it's probably gonna be asking for the radius and interval of convergence 
as well. So now for this series right here, how are we going to find the radius and interval of convergence? Well, this is not something that we're going to be able to do with, you know, just saying that we have a, a common ratio somewhere. It's not a geometric power series. Okay. So what we're going to have to do is use the ratio test. We're not going to want to use the root test, right? Because we have that n factorial that's not to the nth power or anything like that. So we're going to use ratio test. Now, as a reminder, the ratio test is going to have us take the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And for this to be convergent, it needs to be less than 1. Okay, so let's try that. We take the limit as n approaches infinity, the absolute value of, well, we have a x to the n plus 1 here. That's going to be over a n plus 1 factorial. And that's going to be over, well, your a sub n, which is, this is your a sub n. That is x to the n over n factorial. Okay, cleaning this limit up a little bit, you're going to get the limit as n approaches infinity of x to the n plus 1 over x to the n. And that's going to be multiplied by a n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. And of course, we got to take the absolute value. All right. So, well, simplifying this down, we get the limit as n approaches infinity of this x to the n plus 1 over x to the n. That will just be a x to the first power. When you subtract, you get the n's to go away. And that just gives you an x. That will be over, well, n plus 1. Why? Because this n plus 1 factorial is the same thing as saying n plus 1 times n factorial, okay? Which means that the n factorials cancel out, you're left with an n plus 1 on the bottom, okay? Now, notice something here. As n approaches infinity, this is going to be an infinitely large denominator, and it doesn't matter what you put in for x, this limit will equal 0 for all x. Now, that's less than 1, obviously, right? So the interval of convergence, okay, the, the interval of convergence is going to be negative infinity to infinity. Now, obviously, since we're talking about an infinitely long uh, interval, we're not going to have to check any endpoints or anything like that, but usually you will have to check the endpoints, you know, for, of course, for, for ratio test, you will. And of course, what is our radius of convergence? Well, that's just going to be infinity. Okay, so there you go. So you have your interval of convergence and your radius of convergence. And of course, you have your series. Okay, you have your series representing this function. Okay, so we all we did was we, you know, we took derivatives of that f of x to start off with. We, we found that pattern, which was pretty easy. And I'll do some examples that are a little bit more rigorous in the coming videos. We plugged in x equals a to find the nth derivative of f at a. We set up our, our Maclaurin series in this case, the Taylor series at a equals zero. And then we found the radius and the interval of convergence, as you see here. Okay. And, and that's usually just a ratio test. It's most always going to be a ratio test. Maybe it's a root test on occasion, but uh, yeah. So your final answer is going to be that f of x can be represented by, well, now you're gonna write your Maclaurin series here, the sum from n equals zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial on the interval negative infinity to infinity okay and that's kind of how you want to word your answer now here's why this is useful okay we can say that well f of x is equal to e to the x all right and well we can say that this is equal to well let's start writing out these terms here of this of this series okay we get a x to the 0, which is just 1, over n factorial, that's going to be a 0 factorial. 0 factorial is 1, 
okay? That's something that you just kind of have to, to know, okay? Zero factorial is one. I might make a video on that. Just, I don't know, maybe it's just some, some other time. But, right, I mean, just know for now that zero factorial is one. Now, one over one, right? Like we said, zero factorial is one. And then we go on to our next term. We have x to the first power over one factorial, that's one, plus a x squared over two factorial, that's two, plus a x cubed over three factorial, three factorial is six, plus let's do one more term, x to the fourth over four factorial, four factorial is four times three times two times one, which is 24, and this is going to be on and on and on. Now let's say that x is equal to one. So let x equal one. Well, what we can do is, well, if x is equal to one, we're talking about e to the first power here, right? We're talking about e to the first power, which is just e. And we can approximate what that is by using the first five terms of this series, okay? And well, what is that gonna be? So it's one plus one plus one over two plus a one over six, plus one over 24. Now, what does that come out to be? Well, writing it as a decimal, that is 2.7083, and the three is repeating. Okay, now what is the actual value of E? Well, E is equal to 2.7183. 8, 2, and so on. Like it's, you know, it's, it's going to go on and on and on. But you can see how close these numbers are. Okay, 2.708 versus 2.718. Okay, that's, that's very, very close. Okay, and we we're able to do that. We we're able to make that approximation by setting up this Maclaurin series. Okay, so that's kind of why this is useful. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for sequences and series and the next video in the series. Lastly, if these videos are really helping you and you would like to consider supporting me, I have my Patreon linked in the description down below, along with some other pretty cool links that you should definitely check out. See you soon.